all updates installed. Thank you. Accessing Google Drive. Thank you. Downloading notes for today's video. Thank you. Your download is ready. Thank you. <laughs>
was it acoustic? I honestly can't remember if it was acoustic or electric. Obviously, you know, it didn't make very much of an impression on me if I can't, re can't even remember if it was acoustic or electric. Then we have The Parsons with their album Talking Water. Folkish stuff. They do some uh, covers of classic blues and rhythm and blues standards. The Barnyard Boogie, uh, You Can't Judge a Book by the Cover, was a classic blues song. And It's a Sin to Tell a Lie is more of a, uh, a great American songbook kind of thing. But yeah, a, a little bit too folky, almost folky to a cliche extent. Not to disparage their talents, they're talented enough. It's just, you know, that that's how the music came across to me. It's just kind of generic sounding. Yeah. Then we have uh, Mike Hatch with his album Pentimento, uh, Latin guitar, acoustic guitar. Very pleasant, very nice. Uh, just I just didn't enjoy it enough to want to keep it. So yeah. if you like nice, mellow, relaxing acoustic guitar, it's a good one. Then we have my favorite album title of the last bunch, Suffer Up a Chuckle. This was uh, Dirk Hamilton. Uh, rock, kind of a singer-songwriter, but more on the rock edge of things. You know, Again, just none of the songs really jumped out at me. I mean, I, I love the album title, as I said. As much as I love to say the word Suffer Up a Chuckle. Suffer Up a Chuckle. Suffer Up a Chuckle. Suffer Up a Chuckle. Can't justify keeping the album. Then we're coming close to the keepers. We have one more here. Tim Williams is one more of the uh, cast-offs. Uh, his album, When Work Is Done, not bad. It's it's a more uh, kind of along the lines of uh, Dirk Hamilton, kind of singer-songwriter, pop-rock stuff. Did not strike a real memorable chord with me, gotta say. And then we have the keepers. I actually have four keepers, it looks like. Uh, Os Oscar Hammerstein II, this is kind of a, kind of like a songwriter's profile of, you know, the songs that he uh, wrote. This is a various artist compilation. Uh, John Raitt, who happens to be Bonnie Raitt's dad. And we also have Billie Holiday, Dick Hames, Judy Garland, Joe Stafford, Louis Armstrong, Mary Martin, uh, just uh, so many, Mel Torme, Julie Andrews, just a, a star-studded all-star cast of uh, recording artists and vocalists on this album. Good, good stuff, and I'm going to keep it and spin it uh, probably quite a few more times. So yeah, good stuff. Then we have the more, the, the original stuff. Uh, we have Randy and the Bloody Lovelies with their album Lift. This was, I believe, their second album. Pop rock, a little bit leaning toward the alt rock stuff, and uh, as I recall, these are mostly piano-based stuff, so uh, yeah, kind of a little bit ear-catching. Uh, not quite emo pop, but yeah, more along the alternative singer-songwriter rock pop stuff. Uh, yeah, good stuff. to Check it out if you uh, happen to be in the mood for that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know if it's on streaming or not. I don't know if you can only get it on CD or what, but uh, it's worth listening to in my opinion. And then uh, there was another CD in, was it last month's, or I think it was last month's Bargain Bags, that was produced by Phil Ramone. And uh, it kind of took me by surprise because it was a band and an album that I'd never heard of. History repeats itself uh, in the very next month. This is a band called Migs. And this is their album, 15th and Hope. And it was produced by Phil Ramone. And the first time I listened to it, I didn't think a whole lot of it. I was probably preoccupied with work, as I usually am when I'm listening to my bargain bag CDs. But the second time I played it, it really jumped out at me. And there's some great, memorable rock songs on here. So, yeah, if you uh, happen to uh, want to check something new and different out, well, not new. This was put out in 2012, I think. Migs, check out their album, 15th and Hope good stuff. And uh, yeah, I guess almost everything that Phil Ramone touches, or, or, or touched, I think he's uh, passed away, ends up being pretty good, seems like. And then uh, probably the most pleasant surprise in this batch, a band called Frente, which I had heard of but never bothered to check out. This is their debut album, Marvin the Album. Hey, when, you've got, when they've got a sense of humor to call their first album Marvin the Album, <clears throat> I'm going to check this band out. And yeah, good stuff. Reminds me of, I don't know, Lisa Loeb or maybe um, Edie Brickell and New Bohemians kind of stuff, uh, fronted by a female vocalist. Uh, yeah, very good stuff, good tunes, kind of a folkish rock kind of stuff. I don't know if I'm just unnecessarily repeating myself or, or if there just happens to have been a lot of folk rock kind of stuff in last month's bags. But yeah, uh, pretty decent stuff in this bunch of CDs. So now, let's check out the first of the two mystery CD grab bags. And this one actually is, does have a little tear in it. I could only see that serial number there on the end, so I have no idea what's inside this bag. So I didn't peek, honest. See, there's proof, the staples are still there. 
There's, there's no voter fraud going on here. That's my political commentary for today's video. Anyway, let's, uh, and the customary peekaboo for my viewers out there in YouTube land. Let's see what's in this bag. Here we have, hmm, Shane Harper. I've never heard of him. I guess it's a self-titled apparently. Don't know if it's going to be teen pop oriented because he's on the younger side, but we'll see. Kind of, uh, he gives me a bit of a uh, uh, Sean Mendez vibe, simply for the uh, appearance of it. And uh, oh, I've heard of this guy before. I think I might have actually bought and listened to this title at one point or another. But yeah, uh, Mark Copley, Limited Lifetime Guarantee, is the name of the album. So uh, singer songwriter stuff on the rock leaning side of things, if I remember correctly. I will obviously have to listen to it because I don't remember the album at all. And we have My Name is Michael and Other Hit Songs. I don't know if this is a uh, compilation or <laughs> Bipolar Manic Depressive Blues is one of the song titles on here. So I'm going to assume that My Name is Michael is the name of the band. I have no idea. So it definitely looks like an interesting one to listen to. So. Then we have Barbara Kessler with her album Notion, uh, produced by Jerry Marotta. That name sounds familiar, but uh, that's neither here nor there. So yeah. I would assume singer-songwriter, that's kind of the vibe that I get from the uh, artwork. Part of the fun with this is with me is guessing what genres these albums are. Then we have Moses Quest, I guess is the name of the, of the artist. Live Stages is the name of the album. No idea what this is going to be. Uh, as is the case with most of these, I have no idea what they're going to be. And we have Ronnie Baker Brooks. Take Me Witcha is the name of the album. So I'm. Hmm. Something tells me this is going to be Blues. Produced by Jelly Bean Johnson and Ronnie Baker Brooks. So yeah, I have no idea what this is going to be, but it's going to be interesting to listen to. And then we have... Last out of this bag. No Knife. Fire in the City of Automatons. You got me. Yeah. Promo only, not for sale. So don't go selling the CD. But well, that is the first of the two Mystery CD grab bags for the month of November. Okay, now onto the CD Spotlight portion of this month's Bargain Bag video. And to be honest, I almost did this video without doing a uh, Spotlight CD. I thought about dropping that segment from this video, and I'm still thinking about dropping it entirely from the Bargain Bag videos starting with January, since 2021 will be the final year for Bargain Bag. Uh, but if you guys really look forward to the Spotlight CD portion of the video, let me know, and so I will make an effort not to drop it. One of the reasons I'm thinking about dropping it is because I always seem to have trouble looking for a CD to Spotlight. Uh, so, but I decided, you know, right before I set up the camera and got ready to film, I decided to take one more look at my CD racks, see if anything jumped out at me. And it was the peas that I happened to be looking at, the peas in my rock and pop section. And this one jumped out at me, and I decided, okay, I'll go ahead and do this one. So now I am obligated to find one for December. I'll come up with a good one for my December bargain bag. But yes, this one is Madeline Peru and her debut album Dreamland from 1996. Uh, yes, I first found out about uh, Madeline Peru from a profile they did on CBS Sunday Morning a few years back. Uh, she just seemed to be a very interesting person. And uh, also, another reason I, that she came onto my radar was one of her songs off of this album, actually, a song called Getting Some Fun Out of Life, uh, was used in a favorite movie of mine called Free Enterprise, which I might be uh, discussing since it is appropriate for my upcoming uh, companion channel. Well, companion, but it's not ha doesn't have anything to do with music uh, that I may be launching right around the first of the year, I think, possibly early earlier. But anyway, yeah, th those two things compelled me to try out Madeline Peru and this album in particular. Uh, she draws a lot of vocal compar comparisons to Billie Holiday and Bessie Smith, those old-time, kind of smoky-voiced, sultry, torchy kind of early jazz, uh, female jazz vocalists. Uh, she is just fantastic at what she does, and yeah, as I said, she does draw. Uh, those are very apt comparisons to Billie Holiday and Bessie Smith. And Getting Some Fun Out of Life was actually originally recorded by Billie Holiday. 
So, but yes, this is a just a fantastic, delightful, wonderful album of mostly covers of jazz and Great American Songbook standards, uh, although it also has three Madeline Peru original compositions on it. Uh, the album opens with a cover of Walkin' After Midnight, which was made famous by Patsy Cline, so a classic country song opens up this album. So, you know, right there, you can kind of tell that she's not going to be a conventional paint-by-numbers jazz artist with this, uh, this album. And it also includes I'm Gonna Sit Right Down and Write Myself a Letter, which was made famous by Fats Waller, as well as La Vie en Rose by Edith Piaf, and two songs that Bessie Smith herself recorded many decades ago, Reckless Blues and Muddy Water. So yeah, just a wonderful enchanting assortment of songs on this album just it's just absolutely delightful and i like this album so much in fact that it made me pick up a best of album a two disc special edition best of that she put out 2012 2014 something like that and i ended up enjoying that one so much i became fond of it so much that i eventually a few years later traded it in and i now have madeline peru's entire discography so i have all of her albums i liked them so much so yeah she's just really won me over big time bump the table there. Yeah, just a fantastic, wonderful artist. If you like jazz vocalists, uh, female jazz vocalists that remind you of the classics like uh, Bessie Smith and Billie Holiday, you've got to check out Madeline Peru. She is just absolutely wonderful. So, that was a pretty quick review, wasn't it? That's another reason why I'm kind of thinking about maybe dropping the uh, midpoint CD reviews altogether. But, yeah. but yeah, as I said, if you really look forward to the Spotlight CD review, let me know in the comments. So, and and then I will uh, take mercy on you, and I won't drop that segment. But anyway, here is the final of the two bargain bags for this month. And you get to see what's in here before I do. So let's see what's... What wonderful, weird treasures are in this bag here. I have to orient the bag right so that I can pick it up and uh, have it in my hand so that I can show it to the camera effectively. We have second gen irony is I have the irony is I have no idea what this music is. It's just got a, a uh, promo sticker with a button, little write up on it but I'm not going to take the time to read it right now here in front of the camera. I'm, I'm suspecting alt rock or possibly new metal or metal of some sort. It has that kind of that kind of look on the CD. Then we have Georgie James with the their album Places, uh, and this is another promo CD. It's got a big, big lengthy write-up on it. Uh, so yeah, I have no idea what this is. It's a male-female duo. So as you can see of the picture there on the cover, singer-songwriter stuff possibly. I have no idea. I'm just guessing. Ava Trout. They sound familiar. I've never listened to them before, not knowingly anyway, so uh, I'm guessing alt-rock. Uh, 1997 is the uh, release date, so uh, alt-rock, possibly post-grunge kind of stuff. Kelly Liddell. This is actually a Kelly Liddell motion picture soundtrack from a movie called Crazy. I have never heard of that movie. I wish I could come up with something to say about that CD, but I have absolutely no idea, no idea what it is. Oh, Badly Drawn Boy. I have heard of these guys, but I have never listened to them. This thing feels awfully light, so, oh, yeah, it does have a CD in it. It felt so light that it didn't feel like it had a CD in it, but, uh, yeah, I've always looked for, been looking for an excuse to uh, give Badly Drawn Boy a try. It looks like it's only a three CD uh, thing. It's got the, looks like it just has three song titles right there. So, I will finally get to try out Badly Drawn Boy. Then we have... Oh, Star 69. I have heard of these guys too, or at least I've I've recall seeing the CD on the shelves at some point. Kind of cool. It has that uh, iridescent sparkly cover on it. Uh, Eating February is the name of the album. An inter interesting assortment of uh, people there. Hanging out the car. And then the last CD out of this bag... One day I think I'm going to shoot it over the camera, or I'm going to try to. Razor Light, Up All Night. <clears throat> Excuse me. These guys sound familiar too. A few uh, vaguely familiar sounding uh, artist names in this bag. 2004, Mercury Records, so it's a major label album. So. 
I'm guessing most of these look alt rockish. So, an interesting assortment in this bargain bag, the next to last bargain bag for the for the year of 2020. And just like that, that'll do it for my November bargain bag. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.